Hello, I am Jill Sharfman, and this is a mini episode of Let My People Eat, where I share a personal story, a parable, or a bit of Jewish history from which we can all learn something. Candy bombards us at every turn. Whether we are in the checkout line at the supermarket waiting to pay for our manicure or in the classroom, it has lost its classification as a treat. There are aisles of sweets, chocolates, and chips in the kosher markets, and it is so tempting to reward ourselves and our children, and it's so easy. I used to always stop at the candy store and bring a tray of jelly beans, fruit jellies, and gummies when I was a Shabbos guest. Since becoming a nutritionist, I need to practice what I preach, and instead I purchase all kinds of nuts and cut up fruit, or I bake something of my own to bring over. However, there used to be a time when these confections were hard to come by and held a special place in our lives. All of a Kind of a Family by Sidney Taylor was one of my favorite books as a child. It was considered the Jewish little house on the prairie. Five sisters, Ella, Henny, Sarah, Charlotte, and Gertie, live with their parents on the Lower East Side of New York at the turn of the century, and the book delightfully tells us what it was like living at that time. Listen as two of the sisters, Gertie and Charlotte, take their pennies to the candy store and indulge. When they reached the candy store, the two little girls stood before the glass cases so full of chewy and sucking delights and could not make up their minds. It was important that they get something exactly right for tonight's fun in bed. It was ho- so hard to choose when everything looked so tempting. From where she sat on a high stool in a corner of her shop, Mrs. Bloomberg looked at them over the top of her glasses. Ah, she thought to herself, they'll take their time. We'll let them enjoy themselves. She better bent her head once again to the paper she was reading. Gertie pointed to the chocolate-covered peanut bars. Ooh, look, Indian bars. No, Charlotte replied at once. You get too little. We'd finish in no time. Licorice drops take a long time to eat. Look how big they are. Maybe, Charlotte hesitated for a moment and then shook her head. No, they won't do. The pieces will all be the same. They looked at the red cherry hearts, the yellow and orange chicken corn candy, and the different colored jelly beans. Charlotte, half a penny jelly beans and half a penny chicken corn. That would be a whole lot of candy. But we like black jelly beans best, and we can't ask Mrs. Bloomberg to pick out only the black ones for us. You know we hate the white ones, and we always seem to get mostly white ones whenever we buy them. No, let's not take jelly beans. Gertie's suggestion had given Charlotte an idea. Mrs. Bloomberg, she called out, could we buy a quarter of a cent's worth of candy? Woe is me. Haven't I got enough trouble giving you half a penny this and half a penny that? No, darling, for less than half a penny, I can't sell. Charlotte sighed as she turned back to the cases. It would have been so nice to have four different kinds of candy, all for one penny. She and Gertie continued their examinations. One by one, they talked over each kind only to reject it. Lemon drops you could only suck. Caramels had to be chewed so hard and so long. Chocolate pennies melted too quickly in your mouth. The children considered and considered. Suddenly, Charlotte saw little people made out of chewy chocolate-colored candy. Gertie, she cried happily, why didn't we notice them before? chocolate babies. Goody! Gertie was equally pleased. I am Jill Sharfman, and I hope this makes your day a little more satisfying.